So, so I think there's um, something you don't know about me yet is that my first name is actually Benji. B-N-J-I. Benji. Not right. Benjamin, but it's Benji. Right. Um, my mother named me after that Disney dog from the 70s because uh-huh. she fell in love with that movie. Well. <laughs> and so my full name is Benji Wazell Williamson. But I go by Wazell. All right, Wazell. <laughs> now, folks, welcome back to Southern Exposure. And you heard that. We are talking to Wazell. Yes. <laughs> Give me the first name again. Well, Benji. I'm going to let him say it. Proceeds Wazell, but I go by Wazell in my adult life, yeah. Okay. Nice. So if you say Benji, I think you're from back home and right. you know me as a kid. <laughs> exactly. So, and, and your dad said that he thought you would grow into that name. Did you grow into it? Yeah, Wazell, I definitely grew into it mm-hmm. as I got older. Uh, okay. First, I thought it was weird, uh-huh. you know, because right. you spell it Y-Z-E-L-L and nobody could say it, mm-hmm. you know, so I didn't want to use it. Mm-hmm. But when I got to um, my senior year, I mm-hmm. felt like I wanted to change. Okay. And so I went in that year as Wazell. Mm. And then eventually uh, I put an apostrophe between the Y and the Z. Okay. So that people can say phonetically Wazell. You know what I like about that mm-hmm. is um, something you just said. You know, when you got into your senior year, mm-hmm. and, I, and that means that, you know, coming into it, you weren't that comfortable with the name. No. But as name. you grow, you get to know yourself, you get comfortable yeah. with who you, who you are. are. Yeah. Uh-huh. So, and that is very important for people to understand. Until you get comfortable with who you are, yeah. you're not gonna be happy with yourself. You're not gonna be happy, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So, tell us a little bit about um, what you have on the table. We're gonna mix it all up. What you have on the Let's table, why you're telling us about that. Um, mm-hmm. And we are not cooking right now. We are talking. We're Let's chatting. just talk a little bit. So, it's good to catch up. Yeah, yeah. what do you have on the table? Well, I brought some of my, uh, two of my favorite dishes okay. today that we're going to prepare later on. Uh-huh. But I brought some fresh uh, vegetables and herbs and products for us to look at. Uh, you can see the fresh mm-hmm. spinach here. Okay. This is a mixture of bell pepper, mm-hmm. zucchini, uh, broccoli, uh, some And greens, don't tell us greens. what it's for. Okay. Don't, t- don't tell us. Of course, if you like meat. Also, I love carbs as well. Yeah. So I brought pasta. Yeah, me too. I love pasta, <laughs> I love too. pasta. Now, the important mm-hmm. part. Mm-hmm. Is, is you just cook this stuff at home or where do you cook this stuff? We want to we know, where do you cook it? A little it? bit of both. I cook uh-huh. it at home and in my, in my professional life too at the restaurant. Okay, which restaurant? Um, right now it. I'm currently working at Mestizo restaurant on Acadian. Okay. 20 okay. Weeks, weeks South Acadian. Uh-huh. Uh, for those that know, um, my partner is Jimmy Diallis. Okay. And so um, I've been working really side by side with him now for three years. Okay. Be- before I worked in other places, mm-hmm. um, and I would only help him when it came down to big events or catering jobs and things of that sort, yeah. So are you a chef? A chef, good question. Um, <clears throat> I can cook, but I don't call myself a chef at all. Why not? I don't, I don't think I am a chef. Okay. I think I'm a good cook. Okay. And um, I think a chef is a person that has been classically trained, um, has definitely made an impact in the food industry in some way, mm-hmm. or, you know, on a bigger level. Right. I think of myself more as, um, you could say Mr. Hospitality okay. or restaurant tour, but I prefer probably Mr. Hospitality mm-hmm. because I, I think I'm all around. I can okay. definitely cook in the kitchen. I can mm-hmm. eat the kitchen. I can prepare a dish. I can put together a, um, a, a great event for you for your birthday, okay. for your holiday. I can make you feel welcome. Mm-hmm. You know, so I think that is all a part of it. So I can run the business end of it. Okay. Um, but I think that what carries me through in this industry is the hospitality aspect of it of it all yeah. okay so mm-hmm. speaking of carrying you through on it where did you begin did you always start out knowing you wanted to be in no, the hospitality did industry not. did not actually i started out um a little while back mm-hmm. at a logan's roadhouse and okay. i was in western Road, louisiana mm-hmm. and i was in college and i worked my way through school by working as a server there okay and when i graduated i have a degree actually in computer drafting and design technology Okay. I went to work at a firm mm-hmm. at uh, Fort Beck and Davis, and I hated it. Mm-hmm. I hated it because uh, I was in a cubicle, doing these plans, working with these people, mm-hmm. and it just didn't wasn't a good fit for me. Anymore. Now let me cut you off there, mm-hmm. folks. And this this is mainly for your parents and things like that out there, because this is so true mm-hmm. in the restaurant industry. 
Yeah. If it's in you, that's something that you're going to want to do. So it's no matter you, yeah. what profession you do to please the parents, to even please yourself at that moment, thinking you should be doing something different, yeah. it's going to come out. And you have to follow, you follow that passion. passion yeah. mm -hmm. Now, I think that you may can relate to this, too. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> my parents, they, my family was a, a family that kind of brought themselves up. Uh -huh. And they did not see working in a restaurant as a as a thing to do. Right. You know, especially as an African American man, mm -hmm. you know, they're like, you don't work in a restaurant, that's not what you're going to be doing, you know? Right. Um, so I had that stigma as well as society stigma of if you're a server, you work in a restaurant, that means that you're not smart, right. that you are, you know, you're not good, you can't work, you're a failure mm -hmm. kind of thing. Exactly. So I was carrying that weight on me too. Yeah. But the thing about restaurants that I loved was that it uh, opened me up to different worlds, mm -hmm. you know? Um, I found a sense of family when right. I was in that world, right? You know, which I, I like that too. Mm -hmm. And it allowed me to travel and learn stuff. Yeah. And I was definitely in a bubble, mm -hmm. a glass like a glass bubble, and I couldn't get out of that bubble. And so uh, I kept working, and I ended up moving to Baton Rouge, mm -hmm. and I fell into another restaurant. And then I started working for Al Copeland. Okay. And when I worked for him, I kind of feel like it's pretty much saved my life. It was um, working in that environment gave me structure. Mm -hmm. He taught me hospitality. Okay. Um, I saw how hard he worked, even though we know him as Al Copeland. Right. He would come in the restaurants and work with the dishwashers mm -hmm. and on the line. Mm -hmm. And, and that's huge. Guests. That was huge, yeah. you know. Yeah. And he taught us to respect that, you know. Mm -hmm. He's, he taught the dishwashers every day, you are the most important part of this business. You touch every guest. Each plate touches a guest. Yeah. And he made you feel valued. You know, mm -hmm. made you feel valued. And so when I started working in that environment, I started paying attention to how the restaurant ran, how things yeah. worked. So let's fast forward to where yeah. you are now, mm -hmm. taking that experience to present time. Yeah, <laughs> great. Um, I carried that with me throughout my whole time. Mm -hmm. And I felt like that's why I'm Mr. Hospitality because even though I can do multiple things in this business, it all revolves around how I interact with people, yeah. how you make them feel, uh, can you bring them back, you know, mm -hmm. caring about them, mm -hmm. giving them something to remember and carry home with them. Yeah. To carry home with them. And so that's what I've been bringing with that. I believe okay. in it. Call it strongly. Well, folks, we're coming right back. We are cooking. Mm -hmm. We are going to find out more about Wiesel yeah. <laughs> Williamson. Because this is very interesting. Okay. So we'll see you in a few. In a few. Welcome back to Southern Exposure. I'm Chef Celeste, and we are in the kitchen with Wiesel Williams. Hey. So, and we're cooking right now, so, and it smells amazing. What are you making? I'm gonna make us a sausage and shrimp andouille pasta. Mm. And something that I love is carbs and heavy cream. <laughs> <laughs> Everything in moderation, so yeah. it is okay. But what I love about the dish, what you're doing, folks, we are cooking in real time. So, this is cooking while we're talking, and yeah. this dish is gonna finish up while we're talking. This is not something we're gonna cut away and come back to. So run through our ingredients. So this right here would be a chicken and andouille, I'm sorry, a shrimp and andouille pasta, not chicken. That um, works. Things so. that we have around the house every once in a while. I, mm -hmm. I like this dish because it's easy to do if uh, you come from work, feed everybody mm -hmm. real quick. Okay. I expect the guests come over real quick. Um, and also at the restaurant every once in a while too at Mestizo sometimes. And you know what I like about it? What's that? One pot. One, it's one pot. One pot, folks. It's definitely and one pot. And if you pot. just joined us, this is Southern Exposure. We are in the kitchen with Wiesel Williamson. Yes. And um, tell us a recap. What is in the pan? It's going to be, we're doing some jumbo shrimp. Mm -hmm. I used, I started out with the, some garlic. Okay. And some onions. Okay. With a little um, olive oil. Okay. And once I got that going, I put in my andouille sausage. Mm -hmm. Let them Juices started coming out. Yeah. Once it's permeate throughout the pasta. Then I added in my shrimp and then top it off with a little heavy cream, which I love as well. Carbs and heavy cream. That works. Can't go, can't go yeah. wrong with How that. How can you miss that? And I folks, know. heavy cream and a little bit of carbs, not gonna hurt too much. Never hurt Everything too much. in moderation. So that's what I love. And you I know, like about the fact that I like to put my shrimp in the uh, cream because I it saw lets that. the shrimp release its juices and it mm -hmm. goes throughout the, the pasta dish. It makes it right. taste better. And I'm adding in some Cotiga cheese, not ah. Parmesan cheese, a little bit different. What's the difference? This is a Mexican cheese. Ah. It's a little bit more stronger, more pungent. Okay. 
and uh, but it also has a different flavor that goes throughout the pasta whenever you use it. Mm -hmm. Nice. That's Remember that, that Mexican folks. side, um, yeah. mestizo side right there, I guess. So speaking of mestizos, mm -hmm. and, and just kind of add in when you, when you dump something yeah. in here, mm -hmm. what type of cuisine is that? Uh, mestizo is a mix. It mm -hmm. is a mix of the uh, Mexican cuisine. I'm just going to reach across here in front of you right there. Okay? Hands are clean. Mm -hmm. um, it's a mix of the uh, Mexican culture mm -hmm. and the Cajun culture. Jim's okay. father is from Mexico. Okay. His mother is from is Cajun French. Okay. So mestizo means mixed blood. Okay. And um, one of the things I really do enjoy or that drew me towards mestizo into Jim actually mm -hmm. was the fact that he embraced his heritage because mestizo uh, naturally is not is not a a, a nice term. It's mm -hmm. a derogatory term. Ah. So people feel like, why don't you want to be called a mestizo or a mestiza? Mm -hmm. You know, um, not pure. That's okay. kind of what it means. Okay. But he embraced his heritage, embraced his culture, and that's how we get mestizo. Ah, so you learned mm -hmm. something new. So mm -hmm. what do you do over at mestizo? What do you bring to the table? I think that, at the, at, well, I know at mestizo, what I come in there with mm -hmm. is I have a love of doing events okay. and bringing people together. Again, Mr. Hospitality. Right. So I was helpful in bringing that, elevating that game. Mm -hmm. There and now we because of that we are doing uh, weddings, rehearsal dinners now. Uh -huh. um, we have a lot of birthday parties that we do, corporate mm -hmm. events that we do as well. Mm -hmm. um, my past experience in working at the Lyceum, yeah. Dean downtown, where we did events there, mm -hmm. working at the Hotel Indigo, mm -hmm. and working downtown in general, where I was at Cap City Grill, helped me uh, learn how to uh, take care of different sets and different groups yeah. of people and things. That's the one thing that I do miss about being downtown was it was always a mix of something going on. Yeah, and that's something, folks, mm -hmm. um, mm, that good. may not know as much about Baton Rouge coming mm -hmm. in if you don't really live here, but Baton Rouge has a lot going on. It does have a lot going on. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's a destination spot. We have some awesome chefs, mm -hmm. cooks. The hospitality yeah. is on point. So um, and that's, that's what I enjoy. What you just said was something that I think, too, is important is that hospitality can be a career. Yeah. And people don't think about that or realize that or understand that a lot of times. Mm -hmm. but it's definitely a career choice. It doesn't have to always be something that you went to school for, right. got a degree in, and learned. And so learned you that. said something off camera. Mm -hmm. um, you said that the restaurant industry saved your life. Yeah, I definitely feel like it saved my life. Um, How do you feel that? I didn't have a sense of direction. Mm -hmm. When I got involved in this restaurant world, mm -hmm. I um, definitely did a lot of moving around and a lot of partying, I guess you could say. Mm -hmm. So I was good at having a good time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was good at <laughs> creating a good time as well. <laughs> and along the way, I uh, started working with um, Al Copeland and okay. um, Cheesecake Bistro, and it played me structure. Uh, it gave me a sense of family. Uh -huh. It made me feel, it actually made me feel that this industry was important. Yeah. Okay. And so I didn't feel like I was lost. And that's the yeah. one thing. Mm -hmm. Food can bring cultures together. Mm -hmm. It can cross uh, language barriers. Yes, it can. It's a peace offering. Yeah. There are so many components yeah. to just a plate of food. A plate of food, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, definitely. Um, one, I, I, I watch a TV show, Blue Bloods, and it is... Love it. Uh, you watch it. <laughs> I like the ending, but I'm not going to spoil it. Yeah. What is your favorite My part? My favorite part of that whole thing is really is the fact that the family comes together mm -hmm. and have a family meal so on Sundays every week, no matter what, nobody misses a beat. Mm -hmm. And I really, really like that. Um, and you know, they, they do it around the dinner table. Yeah. So That's on this meal right mm -hmm. here, which looks delicious and we're going to taste in a minute, give me three words of how you think a person should feel when they take a bite of this. Like home, it's a, that's home. There you go. We are gonna taste like home <laughs> in a minute. We'll be back. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna speed up a little bit and go okay. ahead and plate this here. That'll work. Yes. That if you wanna add an extra layer, you can always do your, some, um, some spinach with that if you wanna mm -hmm. add an extra layer. But we're gonna just do this here now. We're gonna add on our shrimp. Okay, I'll hold that. Oh, perfect. Yep, give me something to do. Give you a little help here. Yeah. And we'll top it off with some green onions. Okay. This would be great to go with some chimichurri. Mm-hmm. Or you can do a little hot sauce with that on the side if you want to. Mm-hmm. Or even that sauce I was cooking with. 
that you can use that little bit sprinkled across the top. It'd be great. Okay. Let's put some green onions on top. Right yeah. Here. And I mean, you got your color. It looks appetizing. All right. It's filling. That's your alternative to carbs and pasta. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to put that over there. We have two beautiful dishes mm -hmm. here. Thank you. So, these are amazing. Yeah, thank you. We're going to give these a try. So, where can people contact you? Well, you can contact me via Mestizo, actually. Um, okay. These, uh, my email address is wazel at mestizorestaurant.com. Mm -hmm. Um, what that's about one Facebook? Way. Facebook, my page is Wazell, even on Instagram is Wazell underscore Williamson. Uh -huh. And um, all my pictures, usually you can see me as in some kind of form cooking or doing box meals or something related to the food industry or a restaurant. So that everyone. works. Now I have to ask a very important question. Yes, ma'am. What did you season this with? You know, hmm? I definitely used one of my favorite seasons right yes. here. It's so good right here. Yes. Miss Chef Celeste, it's the black pepper and garlic, I think it was. Yep. Yep. And it brings out that pasta so well. Mm -hmm. Thank you, you. Have you tried it yet? I'm going to give it a Let's try it now. A try. I'm going to put some on mm -hmm. a fork for you. <laughs> okay. Guys, mm, you can you. try it later, but we're going to get the recipe to you mm. so you can try it at home also. When you should have been taking notes. Mm. What do you say? That's good. All right. Well, thank you. I also want to thank my other guest, mm. Michael Foster, for that great interview. And um, what, what do you say about that? Yeah. Then we're going to, I'm going to try this one here in a minute, but... We have our regular, we have our carb free. Mm -hmm. So give it a try. Check us out next time on Southern Exposure. I'm Chef Celeste and I thank you and I'll see you next time.